Hi everyone, welcome back to another week on the Brush by Brandy YouTube channel. This week we are going to work on a project in my bathroom. So if you guys have followed my pages, you know that we built our home um, from scratch and this was one of our last projects that we finally finished was uh, tiling this bathroom. So um, my husband did all the tile work. We were gonna put a tub in, we ended up doing a stand-up shower. And one of the things I wanna change is we had this temporary wall treatment on. It matched the shower curtain that we were using to hide the untiled shower. And now I'm gonna go ahead and take these birds off and we're gonna do something a little bit different on this wall now that we finally got the bathroom complete. So the first thing I want to show you guys is how I actually remove the transfer from the wall of my bathroom. You can use transfers on walls. They actually take really easily. These were up in my bathroom for about two years, exposed to moisture and water and everything. And they were unsealed on the wall and they lasted really good. When you remove the transfer, it does do a little bit of damage to your wall paint. So you only want to do this when you're sure that you want to repaint the room itself, which is exactly what I'm going to do here. So I first took a little bit of Goo Gone spray and a piece of steel wool, and I just lightly scratched over the top of my transfer. Now I'm going to apply a little bit of heat with a heat gun, and that's because transfers are made from adhesive, and the heat gun softens, softens the adhesive of the transfer. Then I'm just using a, a light rub with this uh, stir stick, but you can also use a plastic scraper, anything that will just lightly scrape that transfer off of the wall. Once I've got it a little bit scraped off, I'm gonna apply a little more of the Goo Gone and scrub that with the steel wool. This allows the Goo Gone to get down into the holes and the crevices that I created by scraping at it. Any areas that are being stubborn, I can come back and apply a little bit of heat again, and that will soften those up. This entire process, removing all the birds that I had on this wall, it did take me about 30 minutes to do, so the time wasn't so bad. The patches that you see on the wall are because I had some towel hooks on there, and I went ahead and patched those holes because I think I'm gonna put up different towel hooks on this new look. So after scrubbing with the steel wool and the Goo Gone, I came back with a rag and I just wiped away the mess that the steel wool made, and then I came back with a cleaner and I cleaned the wall and then I used water just to make sure that I rinsed away any cleaning residue and my wall was nice and clean to accept my new wall paint. The wall paint that I decided to use in my bathroom is One Hour Ceramic from Wise Owl Paint. And this is a ceramic finish, so it's got a very matte sheen to it, but it's a washable matte. Um, usually you don't use matte finished paint in a bathroom because it's not super easy to wipe down and it's exposed to a lot of moisture. Um, this is actually rated for use in bathrooms. The color that I chose is called Renovation Gray, and it's slightly darker than what I've got on my walls now. Um, the, what I had in there was a little bit of a baby blue, and this is more of a sophisticated gray blue. I'm gonna start by cutting in around the walls using a two inch sash brush, and this is how I prefer to cut in. I painted most every wall in this house, and I always cut in using a brush. Um, and I'm gonna show you some different ways that you can cut in paint, but the brush tends to be my favorite way. This matte finish paint is great because it's going to hide any flaws that you may have in your walls. Now my walls happen to be new because it's new construction, but if you have walls that have imperfections in them, um, a gloss paint will show them off, whereas a matte paint will tend to hide anything like that. Normally I try not to do this and I record new videos for you guys, but I am editing this from my live video because I did these both on live camera. So these original live videos are also available on my YouTube channel if you wanted to watch a more in-depth version, but I'm gonna edit this down for a more brief tutorial as well. So a couple other options when you're cutting in around edges, you can use a straight edge or you can use one of these plastic tools with wheels. You just wanna make sure because they can have a tendency to carry your paint where you don't want it and make a bigger mess. So that is one of the reasons why I choose to just cut in with a brush. Um, I am gonna roll the main section of the walls now that I've got it all cut in. If you're using a traditional roller, you wanna make sure and defuzz all of it, either using a lint roller or a piece of tape and get all those loose little hairs off the roller. So I'm just gonna use a small flocked roller to do this on camera. And what I usually do is I will roll it in a W pattern and then I'll come back and fill in all the sections in between. I wanna roll it right up to the section that I cut in and get a nice clean edge, making sure the cut in portion blends seamlessly with the inner wall as well. This paint does dry a little bit darker than when you first put it on. So it looks pretty similar to my existing wall color, but once it dries, you're gonna see that this one gets a little darker. 
The areas that I did patch on the wall where I had the old wall hooks, I made sure and used a primer on there as well. So I'm not painting over the raw drywall mud that I used to patch the wall with. It does have a primer over it. And then I made sure to sand those down so that it's nice and smooth. You're not going to see imperfections where I filled those wall holes. This paint is called One Hour Ceramic because it actually has ceramic microspheres embedded in the paint. And these little ceramic microspheres reflect the light beautifully. I was shocked when I was finished painting how soft this paint felt. It actually did feel like a ceramic. It wasn't dry and chalky like you'd expect from most matte paints. It actually had this really soft, smooth feel. It felt very much like a high-end luxury paint. Now that I've got my paint all on the walls, I'm gonna go ahead and cut in around the rest of the room and roll that on. And I was trying to decide what new towel hooks I wanted to put in. So I had some uh, more traditional hooks. I had some antler hooks that I thought were cute, but I was actually surprised when I took the birds off the wall, my kids were actually kind of disappointed they were gone. So I contemplated putting up some new birds as well, but I think I'm gonna go a different direction on this wall and I've got a wall treatment I've been wanting to try. And we're gonna do that here. So the treatment I'm gonna do involves a stencil. I'm gonna apply a stencil to this uh, wall and I actually tried to decide between a few different stencils. This is the one that I actually ended up going, going with. This is called Large Italian Medallion and this is from Royal Design Stencils. It's a beautiful stencil and I'm super happy that I went with this design. So what I'm gonna do now that my wall paint is nice and dry is I'm going to roll on a coat of a high gloss clear coat that has a little bit of pearlescent glaze embedded into it and it's gonna catch the light beautifully. I'm choosing to do this against the matte wall paint because the different sheens are gonna uh, contrast with each other and you're really gonna see the pattern that I put on the wall. It's gonna look like a subtle damask wallpaper. So I'm gonna start out by mixing a high gloss clear coat with some pearlescent glaze. And I chose to go ahead and measure out my glaze versus clear coat ratio in case I needed to mix more as I got further through the wall. I ended up actually not needing to mix more. So I mixed one cup of my gloss clear coat to a half a cup of my pearlescent glaze. And this ended up being a good ratio that I got a nice shiny bit of the gloss clear coat and just a little bit of sparkle from that glaze. You could go with a 100% gloss clear coat and that would just give you the glossy sheen. You could also do 100% of the pearlescent glaze and that would just give you a higher degree of pearlescent. I just wanted a little bit of both and that's why I chose to mix them together. Once I've got my glaze and my clear coat mixed into a dish, I stirred them really well so I made sure they were nicely integrated. And now I'm gonna go ahead and tape my stencil into place. Now I'm starting in this corner and I know that I've got a 90 degree corner because my tile is new, my house is new construction. So this actually does work out to be a 90 degree corner. I checked that before I got started. If not, you wanna make sure that you've got your, your stencil placed at a 90 degree angle. And then I'm gonna tape it into place. I'm choosing to start at this corner of my bathroom because this is the first place that your eye goes when you walk into the room. So I played with which area of the room do I want to start in. And because your eye goes here first up to the um, tiled wall, I want to make sure that I have full stencils here. I didn't want to have any broken pattern. So I'm going to start with full tile stencils on this side of the room. I'm gonna apply my gloss and glaze mixture using a high density foam roller. And I'm choosing this because I want as little absorbency as possible. So I don't wanna use a flocked roller that's got texture on it because that texture is gonna pick up the liquid from the tray and it's gonna wanna distribute it underneath my stencil. I wanna get as clean and clear of a stencil as possible. So I actually want a roller that has as little absorbency as possible. I'm also gonna apply my roller using little to no pressure. I just wanna lightly go over the surface because anywhere that I apply pressure, it's gonna have a tendency to squeeze that liquid underneath my stencil and I don't want that. Now I could see the contrast between the glaze and the gloss um, in person, but it was really hard to show on camera. So we did use a flashlight to show some shadows and that was how we were able to show the difference in the sheen on camera. It's very visible in person. It's just very, very hard to take pictures of something that's reflective and get it to show. When I show you guys the final pictures at the end, you're gonna see how apparent the contrast is when you're looking at it in person. The one thing you want to be very careful of when you're doing this technique is your stencil placement. Take extra time in between each placement every time you move that stencil to make sure you've got your placement right. As long as you do that, the actual application is very easy. It's the stencil placement that takes the most time. 
I did need to move the laser level with each placement of my stencil. And so once I had that first placement down on the wall, I could just move my laser level to match up to the top of the stencil. And then I could just run with that laser level all the way across the wall. And by that, I knew that my stencil was always level. The laser level was super helpful, but it's not necessary. If you don't have one, you can always just go through and mark your wall, use a hand level, and just make sure that you're getting your stencil placement correct. This stencil does have a repeat on it, so I could have done an overlap and that would have allowed me to move my stencil a little bit quicker, but I preferred to do it this way because I was able to stencil two of the designs in every place and so it went a little bit faster that way. Um, it also has little marks on the stencil to show you how to place it but I didn't end up using those because it left a little bit of a gap in between the stencil and I preferred the pattern when I placed it myself versus when I used the, the pattern repeat that they give you. So all that means to you guys is play with your stencil placement, have fun with it, decide the pattern that you like and just make sure that you get it accurate all the way across your wall. That's the biggest part of this process. So I went ahead and finished this pattern across my entire wall. It probably took me about two hours to do the entire wall, which I didn't think was bad to get this really high end look. And now we consider this bathroom complete. We did install the shower glass ourselves; that was ordered online. And here you can see this subtle pattern that's on the wall. It just shines in the light beautifully. It's exactly the subtle look that I wanted for this bathroom. I ended up deciding on some arrow hooks and I hung up some wall art with feathers on it. Uh, my boys really enjoy the bathroom and we are getting a lot of use out of it. Here is a video of the finished room put all together. This finish gave me the look of a high-end wallpaper without actually having to apply wallpaper in places that are not considered wallpaper friendly like a bathroom. I also installed some of my favorite towels. These are from Cozy Earth, their new bamboo collection, and this room is complete. You can find more Brush by Brandy on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube, and my website at brushbybrandy.com. Don't forget to click that subscribe button.